Hello, my brother. Welcome to the Great Man Within podcast. Every episode designed to help you discover and live the great man within you. Brian, brother, good to have you back in the recording studio again today. And I'm doing air quotes because I'm in my living room and you are in some place down at the Jersey Shore. I'm back at, back in the saddle in the Jersey Shore. I'm on Long Beach Island. Yeah, what's life Ducca. like down there, man? Gosh, you know, um, it is more open than Brooklyn was. About, about two weeks ago, we left, uh, actually exactly 14 days ago, we left Brooklyn to self-quarantine here in New Jersey. And it's been, it's been nice in that I'm able to go outside and run without running into people every five steps, which has been great. Uh, and tomorrow we're leaving our Airbnb and we're going to live with Becca's parents. Whoa. For the foreseeable future, for the indefinite future. That's a big move, man. How, 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 the, how are the two of you feeling about that? We're, at, we're, feeling, we're feeling good about it. Um, it'll be nice. I remember when I went through chemotherapy and I got to spend three months with my parents as an adult. It was a, a great time to connect with them and let them take care of me. Now, this is a little bit different. So we're, we're excited that we do get to spend more time with them and... We're talking about how do we establish the, the ground rules that are needed for us to operate and for them to operate. For example, when we come down here for a weekend, her mom and dad, they cook all the food, all the meals. They're like super hosts. Like we can't do that indefinitely. Right. <laughs> That's great for a weekend, but we can't do that indefinitely. So what does eating look like? Do we all four of us always eat together or can we eat separately if we want to? So right. when we go to the grocery store, is it just one of us going to go and we get everything for everybody? So I, I think that those are the sort of ground rules that we're going to be talking about as we move over there tomorrow. Yeah. And I mean, and the other thing is like, you're going to be going on their turf. Like this is their home yes. where they've got habits, where they've got their comforts in the way. And they're used to having maybe guests for short periods of time, but this sounds like an extended stay potential. So like, these are, these are the interesting new scenarios that people are finding themselves in where it's like, we've never kind of broached these timelines before this, in, these levels of intimacy before. And I think it's going to, there's going to be some friction if, 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 if we don't have better conversations about this stuff. Yeah. Speaking of intimacy, I'm going to have to be really clear that what I'm doing in the morning by myself in the bedroom is breath work <laughs> and not masturbation because <laughs> they sound similar. <laughs> That's, well, you, you may want to do your muka bastrika with some clothes on because if someone walks in and you're naked, doing that breath work, it may raise some questions. Boundaries. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, man. So like, I think that's a great lead into the conversation that we are, that we're having today about how people who are doing inner work are adjusting to this environment versus people who haven't done inner work. And I'm seeing like a really big distinction between the two. So earlier this morning, I was doing my monthly phone call with Brad Barrett, who's one of the leaders of the Choose FI community, which is a really popular podcast that reaches millions of people around achieving financial independence, right? Like saving money, investing, um, what is it? Spending less, saving more, investing the difference, and then like, like choosing to work in the next five to 10 years, which is a radical concept for a lot of Americans who live paycheck to paycheck, right? And I think one of the recent statistics is about 40% of Americans don't have any savings whatsoever. And, and that's like really problematic in the time right now. And so when Brad and I were talking this morning, he said, Dom, you know, we're about a, a month into this quarantine. What are you seeing from your audience, from the people that you're working with about how people are adjusting? And I thought it was a great question. And I remember like just kind of closing my eyes. I was standing right near Gramercy Park when he asked that question. And I just saw this like one line go right down the center of my vision. It was like creating two columns. And on the left-hand column, were people who were doing inner work or who had done inner work. And I was like, the people who have done inner work, Brad, are feeling the pain of this moment. They're feeling the fear. They're feeling the emotions. They have an expanded consciousness around how people are suffering right now. But they also recognize the significance of this moment. And they have tools and skills that they can leverage to navigate and adapt quickly. And then in the column B on the right-hand side are people who have not had access or who have not done the inner work and they're struggling. 
right? Like the, we're a month in and there's still a resistance to the fact that we are here in a new environment. There's still a, a clinging to, a gripping to, when is this going to be over? Like a craving for it. Like, please tell me when it's going to be over. They want it done and they're missing a big part of the significance of what's happening right now. And they're, and they're suffering in many cases, like I see needlessly. So like that has just, what I, I mean, the headline to that is emphasizing the importance of doing inner work. And the conversation you and I wanted to have today is the three benefits that we are seeing that people who have done inner work are experiencing right now in this new normal. Yeah, Dominic, you and I both grew up playing baseball and we would practice, right? We would have maybe one game a week and then five practices a week and we'd put a donut on our bat so it was heavier, it was a heavier bat. So that when we got into the game and it was time to play, we could turn on a fastball and hit a home run, right? That was one of the benefits of practice. And a lot of times when I, when I tell people what our website is, yeah, go to doinnerwork.com, they look at me and say, well, what is inner work? Like, what exactly is that? And I look at this inner work as the same thing as when we played baseball, only this is for life. That's right. This is for moments like this, like a coronavirus, like a huge interruption in our life that we can, instead of getting smaller and, and freezing, we can actually stand in it, feel it all and move. And so we're ready for, for moments like this. That's right. I think you're, you're, you're spot on. We are ready for this because we have been practicing. We have been training for, situations where the external factors just get completely scrambled. And then the only thing that stabilize, the only thing that you can cling to in that period of time is your inner state of being to stay grounded. So we're seeing that with the people that have done inner work. And, you know, I think I've mentioned to you before, like I've now asked over a thousand people through various webinars and through coaching programs, the same question, which is what's one word that describes how you're feeling right now. And still eight or nine out of those 10 responses are some negative sentiment, some negative emotion like anxious, frustrated, overwhelmed, tired, angry. And there's no judgment whatsoever about those feelings because like these are difficult times. The one group that was an anomaly when I asked that question was our mastermind group, the, men, the group of 20 men. When I asked them that same question, there were, some, there were some of those feelings as well, but there was a lot of blessed, in control, uh, innovative, curious. There were some men who were talking about thinking about others, right? They weren't even thinking about themselves. It's like, how can I help others? And so those are the guys who have been training and that's why I see these two camps. So let's just talk about three of the benefits that we are seeing right now of people who are doing inner work. And I think, we're, I think our intention in sharing this is for you, our listener, to reinforce why you're listening to this. And also to provide this as potential, you know, a potential magnet for others to get on this path, because I think more and more people are waking up to the need for this. Um, so the first reason about why inner work is really helping an environment like this is because inner work leads to faster adaptation to unfamiliar circumstances. And I think you had a, you had a phrase that like, I was like, oh, that's a good one that I want to make sure we share with our audience. Yeah, yeah. The, the, so I've, I've talked to many people that haven't done a lot of inner work and I get this feeling of slow shock. So it's not a shock like I got in, in a car accident and boom, something shocked me. This is like something that we're a month into this thing now and people are starting to recognize or going from amorphous feeling to, oh, one example, I was talking to a guy yesterday and he said, I just realized that my commute from home to work was a time for me to process whatever I was feeling, to think through things. And that was a really important thing for me. And I just realized I wasn't doing that anymore because my commute is now from my bed to my desk. And so now he wakes up in the morning and he goes for a walk outside to simulate that commute. That's right. And it's like, oh, interesting. But it took a month, right? And that's a very, very small thing. Um, so, so the adaptation that we can feel when we do the inner work is this, is this quicker awareness to how we're feeling and the fact that we can change it. That's right. Like I, the people who are doing inner work recognize that the game changed very quickly and are, are quickly able to release attachment to the way things were to say, I have now entered a new game. And please tell the story about the firefighters because like that, that, I think like when the winds change, like that is a great story that I think 
bring some like real clarity to what we are experiencing right now. I'll keep the story uh, abbreviated, but the, sh- the short version is uh, there are, think about firefighters as paratroopers. They like, literally drop into the areas where a fire is burning. And so this group of firefighters dropped in, they were fighting the fire, the winds changed to come back towards them. And at their back was a giant wall, it was a cliff. And so the only way to get out of there alive was to climb that wall. Half the firefighters died. They didn't make it up the wall. The other half did, they survived. And when they looked at it, like, well, what was the difference? Like, why did half survive and half die? It was the people that dropped their backpacks with all their tools in it to climb the wall and get the hell out of there because they recognized the winds changed, the game had changed. It was about survival. The other ones, they had been trained to never, as a firefighter, you never leave your, your tools behind because your identity of a firefighter, like you can't fight fires without the tools. Right. And so they were still playing by the same rules, the old rules, and they, you know, quite physically kept it on their back and died doing it. That's right. And that's a sad story. It's also a powerful one to recognize, okay, like we're in a game that we've never played before. So we almost have to question everything that we've ever been taught up until this point. And, and when you've done the inner work or are doing the inner work, there's a greater sense of awareness around that much more quickly. So that's number one. Inner work is leading to faster adaptation to unfamiliar circumstances. The second one, it's kind of building off of the first one, is that inner work leads to the development of empowering new protocols for this new environment. And uh, one of the men in our mastermind, Ryan Eller, I know you're listening right now, brother. He introduced this concept above, it's not his concept, but he, he talked about social constructs to our mastermind uh, about a week ago. And he gave this example of how, you know, there, there's two types of social constructs, right? The written rules and the unwritten rules. Think of written rules as like laws that govern our you know, operating society. Like those are pretty clear, but it's the unwritten rules that are the glue that keeps our humanity together right? Like how we treat each other. He gave this example of for a guy, if you walk into a men's room and it's empty and there's 10 urinals and you go all the way to the one on the right, if the next guy walks in and he goes right to the urinal next to you, that, that violates an unwritten rule. Like, yeah, should, give me some space. Right, Get out of here. Guy some space, right? There are a million of those little unwritten rules that kind of keep things, keep the, the, the wheels turning. Well, when the, everything changes, when the entire society changes, then new social constructs, unwritten rules need to come up and need to be discussed. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of friction. And I know, Brian, with you very early on, you and Becca, I think we used this example before, but when the both of you ended up moving all of your work to home, there was some early friction that you guys were able to clean up in a matter of days. But tell that story. Yeah, she was annoyed because we were in two separate physical locations and she was in the kitchen. Every time I would come in there to get a drink or do something, I'd say, hey, how you doing? I'd like rub her back. And eventually she said, hey, this is annoying because you're getting me out of my flow. Like, I'm, I'm working, I'm trying to get things done. And so we had to come up with a new tool for communication, which ended up being post-it notes of like, yes, I can talk or no, I can't talk. Right, right. And we got that idea, I think it was from Nir Ayals, who we interviewed yeah. about his book, Indistractable. It's like, I'm doing work right now. And I think the, the, the notes that you put were, I thought these were her notes that she had written and put on her laptop that said, I love you on the left-hand side and shut up on the right-hand side, but you had written those notes to yourself. Yeah, sometimes I need better systems just to <laughs> operate, right. Yeah. So, and, and another, Don, we already mentioned this one, but another a tool, another system is when, I, when we go to live with her parents now, Typically, we just walk in the door. Hey, how you doing? That's great. Can I get you something to eat? But no, like now, because we're in this and we know that we're anticipating, right? We're anticipating that this is going to be different. Let's set the ground rules. Where is everybody at? What are they thinking? And ground rules aren't a, a, a negative tool. It's like, how do we collaborate? How do we create these unwritten rules? Because we don't know what they are. Exactly right, man. I mean, and you, you figured that out with Becca, the, that part of the story with Becca in, in a matter of days. There are other people who are just at each other's throats for the past month because they haven't like recognized that like new social constructs need to be discussed. As you are moving into her parents' home, now you can actually set the foundation from the very beginning, which creates cohesion, communication. It, it eliminates potential for, for frustration and conflict later on. So yes, doing inner work leads to the development of empowering new protocols much more quickly. 
And the last part of this, this, this came up from part of the conversation we had with, uh, I had with Brad this morning. The third reason why inner work is working for people is that we're feeling the significance of this moment, right? The, the significance of the period of time that we are in, which may be a once in a lifetime experience, hopefully. Like hopefully we don't have global pandemics that debilitate us like this before, uh, like this ever again. Maybe we will, who knows? But you and I were talking before we hit the record button. It's like, you know, over the course of our lives, there are only a few of these standout moments that like, that like really bring us all together, that really wake us up and call into question everything about how we've been living. And in, in my lifetime, it was, I remember like the first one was the Challenger explosion. I think it was like in 1984, 85, like the, the, you know, the space shuttle explosion. Like the whole world kind of stopped when that happened. 9-11 was a big one. Uh, it was, was like the biggest one of my life. And then, you know, Princess Diana dying, like it was probably the most famous person that just like everyone in the world loved at that point in time. There are, there, there are parts of what's happening right now that is quite significant because we are fundamentally changing how we operate as humans, if, uh, fundamentally changing how we structure ourselves from a government perspective, how we're going to be saving money. It's going to change how we work. It's going to change how we spend time with our families and loved ones. Like everything is changing. And I think that people who have done the inner work can feel the significance of this moment. And those who haven't are just kind of like, can this be like, I want this to be over as fast as possible. I was talking, I had a conversation yesterday and somebody said, every day feels like a Tuesday. It's not a Monday, like the beginning of the week. And it's not like a Friday, you're towards the end of the week. It's not halfway, like you're over hump day. It's a Tuesday, every single day. <laughs> and like, that, it could be very easy. Like we're all at our homes. It could be very easy to fall into that trap of every day being a Tuesday. And so the question that I ask myself when I think about the significance of this moment, there's a guy named Caesar Pavisi, and his quote is, we don't remember the days, we remember the moments. And so the question I ask myself is, how do I want, how do I want to remember this moment of coronavirus, of being, of being at home. And I, want, I don't want it to be a bunch of Tuesdays that blur together. I want it to be a time of creation. I want to be a time of outreach. I want to be a time of like, I'm, I, I have different types of relationships with different people. And so I want the significance of this to be something more than just Tuesdays. I love that, man. Yeah, because it could easily become just Tuesdays. And again, going back to the conversation with Brad, you know, he told me this morning that he and his daughters and his wife have been doing uh, CrossFit exercises, like workouts, five days a week together, these like online 15 to 20 minute workouts. And he sent a picture to our mastermind chat of like a post workout from this morning. And he was like, I've never, like, we've never done these workouts together. And, and like, and now they get a chance to see like the part of my life that is so important to me and be a part of it. And Anna, his, his uh, older daughter, um, was so enthusiastic about doing that workout that it cut our conversation short this morning because she was like, let's do it now. And Brad's like, I got to go. And I'm like, do it, dude. And he was like, I'm, I'm actually basking in the glory of this because I may never have this with her again when, when life goes back to quote normal. So there are these beautiful, like you said, moments that we're going to be able to remember. All right. So let's do a recap here. The reason why inner work, there's three reasons why I'm seeing inner work and those who are doing inner work adapting to this environment uh, much more quickly is because number one, inner work leads to faster adaptation to unfamiliar circumstances. Number two, inner work allows you to develop empowering new protocols quickly to adjust to the new environment. And number three, inner work allows you to feel the significance of a moment without hoping it'll rush by or be over because of the discomfort that it brings you. So as you are continuing to acclimate to this new environment, connect with those three pieces and also share those with others who are maybe struggling and need to get on this path of doing inner work so that they can too discover and live the great man within them.